What's up guys? I'm gonna be making a video today on how you can get your CDL when, if you're under 21, real easy. Cause most people don't even know you can get your CDL at 18 actually. I got mine when I was 18, but I was just turning 19 like the next week. So I just started the process when I was 18, but I really got into, you know, learning this stuff when I'm 19. But yeah, cause I go to job sites right now, I got a job. I go to job sites uh, and they ask me how old I am cause I think I look younger so they, I look young. So they're like, how old are you? I'm like, I'm 19. They're like, oh, I didn't even know you can get your CD out then. I'm like, yeah, you can. And you can do Okay, it. I wrote it on paper so I don't forget anything. So first step is obviously gonna be, you gotta find a school. So for, if you're 21 and up, you can go to any school, you know. I recommend if you're 21 and up to go to a school that gives you a job right after you graduate, cause they do that. But if you're under 21, you, they're not gonna accept you into those schools. And those schools like that, real, real schools that find you a job right after you graduate, they're about five, $6,000. If you're under 21, like me, because I was about to go to, I think it's called Community Church Drive School, something like that. So it's over here in Austin. And uh, I was about to go to that school. I called them up. They're like, okay, blah, 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 blah. They were talking about the requirements, steps, and all that. And I just asked them, I'm like, so how old do you have to be? I'm 19. They were like, oh, you actually have to be 21 to even enroll and stuff. So I'm like, okay. So I went with, um, CDL school is called Good Roby. I recommend it. I got my CDL real fast. It was a relaxed environment. And I actually ended up working for that school right after I graduated. And I'll tell that's a whole nother story. I'll tell you about that later. So I you actually was an assistant instructor. Sort of got most people don't believe me because they're like, oh, you didn't even drive one mile yet. How did you become an assistant instructor? What most people don't understand is CDL school is just to help you pass the DPS test. It doesn't, most of, most of the things you learn about driving and being on the road is when you're actually driving and being on the road. That's, the school is not gonna teach you that. It's just to get your license. So he's seen that I was really good at the pre-trip. I got, well, I got the pre-trip, like the back of my hand, like I can say section A through C, in cap, coupling, all that, like right now, it's like, I got that down, I studied it real well, and he liked the way I was doing it, and he just wanted to hire me just as a help. And eventually, like after a week, two later, I actually started running the classes by myself while he's, you know, in the office and doing what he has to do. And it was actually a good experience because like when I do my pre-trip now on my, on my truck and stuff, I know everything, you know? And you can get like me too, it's not hard. <laughs> So, step one, find you a school, man. If you're 21 plus, go to them big schools. If you're 21 under, just find a little school, call, do your research, call them, ask them the requirements, how much. I paid $2,750 for my CDL. And most schools, they have packages. So there's the cheapest package, which gets you less hours training time. There's like a middle one and there's the top one where it gives you all the hours. I chose the cheapest one because I wasn't trying to spend three, four thousand dollars. I wanted to spend two thousand seven hundred fifty. And honestly, the packages, the school I went to at least, he made sure that I was ready before I even got on the road. But I was also kind of, I was, I also pick up things fast, so it didn't really take me too many hours to get everything down. So you can. I recommend you do the cheapest package and just study at home and work on it at home so you can, when you get there, you're just, you just go fly through it. You don't even need that many hours. But if you, if you don't really, if you want to take like the safer route, it might, I don't know, I guess y'all yeah, can do it, but I chose the cheapest package and I got my CDO like four, four weeks, four weeks, yeah, a month, about a month, a month and a half, probably, yeah. So after you enroll into a school, they'll send you a ELDT course to get your certificate so you can go to the DPS and get your permit. I recommend 
right at, right after you pay the school, go online and schedule the permit test because it's booked up, man. Because if you wait right after you graduate the course, which takes about a week, 10 days, your permit test is going to be like in two weeks after that. Like if you go to the school, just schedule it yourself, put your name, schedule it right after you pay and give yourself a week just to learn the ELDT and get your certificate. It's really the ELDT course really didn't because I was just flying through it. I was just clicking answers and passing it so I can get the certificate. And after that, so I got the certificate and I told the school, I was like, hey, I just got my certificate. I'm ready to get my permit. She was like, oh, I'm going to schedule you. And I was like, I already scheduled myself. It's next week. I'll go get it. She was like, okay, that's fine. So there's like a little app you could download to study for your permit test. I didn't like the app. It was like a thousand some questions, 5,000 questions. I was going off the app. I went there first time, failed. I went there second time, failed. Third time, I think I passed the third time. Maybe, yeah, I passed the third time. But the key is, what you need to know is when you go get your permit test, there's the Texas requirements, there's general knowledge, there's air brakes, and there's combinations. I don't, I don't think, I think that's all of them. I don't think I missed one. But the general knowledge is going to be the hardest one. It's 25, no, it's 50 questions. And this is going to be, you can only miss like four or five. I don't know, I forgot. But the key is at the DPS, you right after you pass the Texas requirements, since I'm in Texas, I have to do that. The Texas requirement test is like 15 questions. Once you pass that, you don't have to go into general knowledge right away. Tell the lady, hey, I just passed those requirements. I'm ready to do my general knowledge. Can I get a little 15 minute break? She's gonna be, she's gonna say yes, that's what I did. And then go on Quizlet. Quizlet is the most crucial step right here because the app, you can sit through all the thousand questions, two thousand questions if you want to. I'm not doing that. So Quizlet, they have little flashcards. You can just tap it and everything is on there. So after you pass the first test, when you're ready to do your general knowledge, take that little 15 minute break to look through the Quizlet. So look through it, look through it, look through it, and then go do your general knowledge test. After you pass that 15 minutes, look through the air brakes, look through it, the air brake, you pass it. Combination, same thing. So Quizlet, 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 if you're not trying to go through thousands of questions, because Quizlet got all the basic questions they ask. Quizlet, Quizlet, Quizlet. And step three. So after you get your permit, I don't know, some schools, I don't know how some all, all the schools work, but my school, after I got my permit, they scheduled me like a week. I had to wait a week to get into like actually learning and stuff. So I went to the office, I picked up my preacher packet. That preacher packet is, boy, that is this thick. Pre-trip is going to be the hardest thing in this whole process. Driving is easy. Everything else is, you learn that. Pre-trip is hard, bro. Because a certain way you have to say it. You have to say it according to the CDL handbook. Don't waste your time looking through the CDL handbook. If you have time, yeah, go ahead and learn it. If you're good at that stuff, learn the whole CDL handbook. But trust the pre-trip packet that your school gives you. My school gave me, my school does it. They summarize the CDL handbook, but they hit the key points. So if you say everything that's on the little packet they give you, you pass, you're done. So what I recommend is right after, really right when you enroll, study, start, study, start studying pre-trip, like go online, look at pre-trip videos, people doing it. And it's not just like truckers online just, you know, filming themselves doing pre-trip on the car and like a day in the life. No, do DPS pre-trip test, like, you know, because i am be honest with you. When you start getting in the real world, you don't, you don't follow like every single step in the handbook when you're doing pre-trip. You usually test the, like, you just look around the truck, test the most important parts, 
open the open the hood, coolant, oil, belt, any leaks, look at your brakes. Like just you just look through it. You're not saying it like you're not saying the whole handbook to you know? Y'all truckers know. Yeah, you know. You check your tires and all that. So pre trip is gonna be the hardest. So start studying that so you can pass through it. Cause after you pass through pre trip, the way my school did it is they they taught us, you know, pre trip was the most important part of the test. So they made us pass pre trip first before we could even get in the truck. So section A, we will study it and he will test us. Passed it. B passed it. C passed it. Coupling in cab passed it. And after that you get to, you know, straight back in, offset, and parallel. And when I was the instructor, too, that's how I did it. Because most people don't understand that. Preach, I don't even understand that. I'm like, why am I learning this packet? It's a big packet, bro. Like, 20 pages, I swear. So, learn your pre-trip. And I'll kind of, I'll make another video on pre-trip. Little cheat codes, little, little tips and tricks to help you pass. But pre-trip is the most important. And then, once, I'm looking at the notes. Once you pass your pre-trip, it's time. It's time to get in a truck. Me, I've never driven a truck. I always had a sedan. Never had, like, never had no experience pulling a trailer, backing up a trailer, nothing. It's my first time in a big truck like that. So if I can do it, you can do it. Straight backing, it took me... It took me a long time. It took me two weeks just to get the mechanics. And I'll, I'll kind of, I'll make, the, when I make the preacher video, I'll make a, another, like I was mentioned, little tips and tricks for the straight back, offset, and parallel because I used to teach people that. I actually, man, most of y'all don't believe me. I have reviews on the school website saying, they're thanking me. So listen, I promise I'm not telling you no, no BS. You're going to pass the test if you listen. And it's just, it's just not even listening, it's just, you know, take the advice. So, straight backing, it might take you a little minute if you never had no tractor trailer experience. And if you ha if you do, it's gonna be pretty simple for you. It depends on what type of trailer your school uses. My school used the short trailer, so it, any little thing moved a lot. It was never like really straight, unless you're driving forward. So, little movements, you know. If it's a big trailer, it's easier to do maneuvers in a 53 feet than like a, a devil's trailer, you know? So you'll get through that all set parallel. And then the day comes, they schedule you for your DPS test. Most schools, the big schools, they do the test there. And I'll make a video about that too. It's, it's kind of like, like, so 75, 30, 70, 70, 30, if you pass with them or not, because I'll, I'll tell you all about that. So, but my school, they do DPS. You go, they schedule you at the DPS, you go there and do it. So when I have mine, so they give you cards. So it's a card, it's like, a, it's like literally like a, a luck game. So they have these little flashcards that has section A, Section B, Section C, and Section D. D means you do everything. A, B, C, D, and cap coupling. In cap and coupling are mandatory. You do that any anyways, whatever card you pull. In cap and coupling are mandatory. So practice in cap. Because in cap is where a lot of people mess up because on a on the pre trip, you can miss a couple of things, miss say a couple of things, they'll let it go. In cap, since it's the brake system, brake system is the most important. Like, you have to get it perfect, bro. So, get it done. In cap is the most important. Remember that. So, I had section D. I pulled, so they put the flashcards upside down and they just tell you to pick a card. My luck, pull section D. But I was pretty familiar with the pre-trip system, so I wasn't really, you know, stressed out or tripping or nothing. Did the whole truck. Took me about 45 minutes. It was summertime. It was July in texas and y'all know july in texas it's either humid hot both or dry it just everything bro it's just hot it's just hot so i was out there for 40 minutes mouth dry 
explaining to the instructor everything. I did pretty good on that. And then the road part, the road part, easy. And one thing I forgot to mention, whatever you think, don't have a manual restriction on your license. When you go to the school, tell them you want to learn on a manual. Because what that manual restriction does is it limits what you can do. You know, of course, nowadays, every single truck is automatic. There's barely any, any manual uh, trucks like the companies operate except like one or two, like the backups. But let's say you want to go into your own business. My instructor told me, I don't know if this is 100% true, but my instructor told me, let's say you want to go into your own business and you want truckers insurance. They see a restriction on your license, so they raise it up just a little bit. And if you're under 18, I mean, under 21, you already have that K restriction. So that's how, that's two restrictions right there. Me, I only have the K restriction. K restriction means I can't go out of state until I turn 21. And that's what everybody under 21 is gonna have. If I have both, it's just kind of, you know, it just, it just looks, looks a little, you, you look limited, you know? You can't drive manual, you're under 21. What are you gonna do, you know? So, get your manual. It's not that hard, I promise. I learned it and I've never even drove a manual car before. It's easy, double clutch. You have to double clutch for the DPS test. And another thing that I'm trying to remember is, ah, uh, I can't remember. I'll get back to you when I remember. I remembered, it's jobs, especially if you're under 21. Man, I had, so after, when I became the assistant instructor, you know, it was on and off work, you know, I work for, I work for five days straight, one week, and then the next week I'm off, because it's not enough students, you know, it's not enough money coming in to pay me. So, it, it was on and off work, I work for two days a week, three days a week, off next week, I'll be off for two weeks, three weeks, you know, and that doesn't get the bills paid, you know. So, after that, when I was looking for a job, I, I'll show y'all, I can show y'all my Indeed. Bro, I applied to about a hundred jobs. Local CDL, cause I can't go out of state. Every job, they either call me and they're like, okay, hey, we're interested, we're interested. And then out of nowhere, they're like, you need six months experience, you didn't mention that. I kind of did. Or they're like, oh, you're under 21. Our insurance won't cover that. So for us, 18, 19, 20 year olds, it's, man, it's, hard. it's tough out here, bro. So what I recommend, there's, it's not even, it might help, it might not help. It's just, just look for a job while you're still in school. You know, don't wait till you graduate. Still apply, apply to all the jobs you can find. Look for dump trucks, dump truck and dumps. If you know somebody that runs a little business, call them, text them, do whatever, use your connections. Uh, look for the small companies, small companies that are willing to hire you. And basically, yeah, that's the that's the toughest part, bro. Finding a job after you graduate. Because I still have students calling me to this day talking about, I still have no job. I'm like, I told y'all. I didn't know back then. I didn't even tell them nothing. But it's hard out here, man. It's hard. And with all of us new drivers, I'm going to admit it, we messed up the whole industry because there's a lot of new drivers coming in. And... The price is going low. It's just we're not in demand anymore. Like you can look to your left, you can find a CDL class A holder. You know, they're not truckers. Not really. I mean, you still work out there, for, for, like for sure. But it's not how it used to be. Because my uncle told me, you know, he used to make ten thousand two weeks, fifteen thousand two weeks. Just you know, just driving, and now you know the loads are bad. It's like. I went on a low board just a couple of days ago just to see how the market is doing. I see, I seen rates one dollar thirty three cents a mile. You don't want to deal with that, and especially if you're an owner operator, you gotta deal with your truck, trailer, insurance, everything, and then deal with those rates. Just work for a company, man. Go local. Go local. Get paid thirty dollars an hour. That's enough for me to live. You know. So finding a job is gonna be the hardest part, guys, because. It took me a minute, and but after I found a job, I got experience. I've I've been driving since I want to say like November, 
I got experience now. I'll take y'all on a little day in the life for me of see what I do. And I got the experience now. And if let's say I wanted a job, it would be easier for me to get experience. And I don't have, I know how to drive manual. So, you know, the only thing going back for me is just my age now. But that's really it guys. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. And one more thing, don't quit your job while you're in school. Don't think you're gonna fly through this in two weeks. Because I promise that's not it. Keep your job until you graduate. If you got it like that, quit your job. I quit my job while I got it. But I realized, I was like, oh shit, it's a mistake. So keep your job and don't, don't do none of that class B. No, because everything's the same, bro. Everything is the same. Get your class A, get your manual, then learn how to drive manual. So you don't have restriction and every like, you'll be set. You'll be more than qualified, you know, for these local jobs. Cause you just don't want to put too many points on yourself and everything. So yeah, don't quit your job, get your manual, get a class A, Quizlet, four things. <laughs> and yeah, so I'll make a video about this truck and stuff, you know, a little, little tips and tricks since I used to be an instructor and yeah, see y'all next video. Peace.